PMH Consultancy and Education Limited. Empowering nurses and leaders within healthcare. The theory behind action learning and how this can be used in practice. This video will examine the issue of action learning for nurses and clinical leaders and the benefits of this approach with regards to networking within clinical practice. A brief overview in relation to theory and the benefits action learning can bring to organizations will be discussed. The video is designed to provide a framework within which action learning can be considered with regards to networking, and the factors that need consideration when networking with others is being planned. Definition of Action Learning Action learning is a continuous process where learning and reflection take place with the support of a group or set of nurses and clinical leaders, enabling them to work on real issues, with a key focus on how things can be done differently. This approach has been used within healthcare settings for many years and focuses on solving problems and involves taking action and then reflecting upon the results. The learning that then takes place enable nurses and clinical leaders to improve their ability to problem-solve complex issues with their teams, as well as find solutions in situations that may present challenges for clinical practice. Action learning within clinical practice generally involves the following, a clinical problem or issue that is important, critical, and sometimes complex. A designated problem-solving person team or set. A process of problem-solving, action learning that promotes curiosity, inquiry, and reflection on the clinical issue in question. A key component is a requirement that talk is converted into action and then a solution identified. Theory in relation to action learning Action learning has a long history dating back to the 1940s. It was first pioneered by Professor Reg Revens who applied the concept to support organizational and business development with regards to problem-solving and improvement in service delivery. Professor Revens trained as a physicist and noted the value of scientists sharing experiences in order to learn and devise solutions. Since then, action learning has been widely used within healthcare settings to support with complex clinical issues. This has helped nurses and clinical leaders to bring about discussions where learning has taken place over a period of time in groups, through programmed knowledge and skillful questioning. Reflection was later added to action learning to enable individuals to go beyond merely questioning, but in fact reflect on what they are doing, which is why this has been essential within clinical practice, where reflection is advocated as fundamental to promote best practice. Action learning is usually facilitated through using small groups of nurses and clinical leaders to challenge one another but also provide support, therefore, providing an opportunity for them to use this as part of networking. The key focus is on that nurses and clinical leaders learn best with and from one another as they work through the clinical problem or issue and then go on to actually implement their own solutions into practice. Action learning has been seen to be effective in clinical leadership development and enabling individuals to problem solve. The benefits of action learning for nurses and clinical leaders are Enable nurses and clinical leaders to reflect on their practice. Enable nurses and clinical leaders to problem solve complex issues through connecting with others. Provide support for nurses and clinical leaders and challenge areas of specific clinical practice. Provide the opportunity for nurses and clinical leaders to examine their clinical practice and be held professionally accountable for actions and their impact. Enable nurses and clinical leaders to set goals and provide the opportunity to develop different clinical options and take action which may not have been possible if working in isolation. Enable nurses and clinical leaders to develop skills of active listening and skillful questioning. The benefits for organizations are Nurses and clinical leaders can listen to and work with others. Nurses and clinical leaders can take responsibility for their actions and the impact of those actions. Nurses and clinical leaders can identify and learn new perspectives on real issues, often enabling them to break through on long-standing clinical issues. Enable nurses and clinical leaders to enhance confidence to bring about change. Enable nurses and clinical leaders to have greater self-awareness. Enable nurses and clinical leaders to have a clearer understanding of how learning occurs within clinical practice. Enable nurses and clinical leaders to reduce stress through sharing best practice and problem solving on complex and challenging organizational and clinical issues. What is an action learning network? Learning and action network groups are designed to bring together nurses and clinical leaders or other stakeholders, such as people who use services with the aim of improving practice, knowledge or service provision. It allows nurses, clinical leaders, providers and partners to share knowledge and apply best practice principles in order to find the most effective and efficient clinical practices that improve patient care outcomes and service provision. It relies on a peer-to-peer -peer approach to education and learning where nurses and clinical leaders can learn from each other. 
Context and development of networking services for people who require support from healthcare are now widely dispersed across a range of differing providers in a mixed economy of care across the statutory, independent, and voluntary sectors. However, regardless of the work setting, nurses and clinical leaders are likely to have similar educational and developmental needs, depending upon the particular sector in which they work. Therefore, networking can be of considerable value with regards to development and action learning enable them to achieve this. Networking in practice The framework in which action learning through networking can be considered will involve the following. Firstly, consider the context and aim of the exercise and as a result what structure would best meet this aim. For example, will the structure be formal, e.g. a planned activity within a team. Informal, e.g. chance contact at courses or meetings. Organized by others on a local, regional, national or international basis. Local and self-organized. Based on a central theme or topic, e.g. arranged to discuss an issue, such as dignity and care, safeguarding, quality. A reactive-based approach meeting only when needed and agreed, e.g. to discuss a new report and its findings, safeguarding, quality or new legislation. Achieving effective networking One of the most effective ways of considering and agreeing the aim and context of the exercise is often to arrange to meet other like-minded nurses and clinical leaders to talk through the issues first, on an informal basis, and agree a way forward. Having done this, ensure nurses and clinical leaders have the support of their senior managers so that the group has legitimacy. Sometimes it is not always necessary to set up a new group, as an existing group may already be in existence, and it could be suitable for other clinicians to join this. However, for those who feel that a differing arrangement or new network is needed, it is often useful to ask a representative of an existing group to come and talk and provide tips and helpful information. Having agreed the aims of any group, objectives should then be created to ensure that the purpose of networking is clear to all those involved. The following can be considered. Nurses and clinical leaders can see the benefits from sharing common goals, working together on problems, and sharing clinical practice experience. The objectives are clearly linked with local and national clinical practice and policy development so that it remains relevant and up to date. A sense of direction and purpose is helped if there are designated and agreed facilitators who can manage groups and networks to ensure that they are actively and appropriately used. Nurses and clinical leaders can take responsibility for encouraging debate and fostering a healthy and open exchange and provide information from clinical practice and their own experiences. Action learning is widely considered by many nurses and clinical leaders as part of continued professional development, and a useful mechanism for nurses and clinical leaders to support and learn from one another. In a diverse healthcare sector nurses and clinical leaders can sometimes feel isolated and overwhelmed. Networking can, therefore, provide a useful tool with regards to working with others and provide valuable learning, as they often learn best from each other.